So we've been talking about various concepts um, about content, creating content, infographics, blog participation, all of that. And uh, if you're interested in, in more of that discussion on social media, I'm teaching the social media class. I recommend you, you, you get into it. So uh, what I want to talk about now is um, I want to show a few things regarding uh, tangibly what to do on a website uh, and I guess depending on the show of hands here this will this will guide the lecture but how many of you currently have a website can you raise your hands okay and those of you that have a website how many of you currently is it built with WordPress uh, majority okay if you don't have a WordPress or don't have a WordPress based if you don't have a website or you don't have a WordPress website you can still follow along and these concepts will still apply to your website slightly different ways. What I'm going to do is open up a website and I'm going to uh, mention some of the some of the uh, plugins and such that I would recommend for SEO. So if you've got a website of WordPress you can log into it to show you this. If not, again just follow along. Okay, so I've got a testing website um, site to play with here. Um, uh, again, we, we don't have the time to get very deep into WordPress. Take the WordPress class. Uh, but what I want to talk about is that we have, under WordPress, we have the ability to add plugins to our site. Uh, up here on the menu, we've got different things that we can do. One of them is plugins. Plugins are like extra features, like mini apps that we can add to your website for more features. So I'm going to make a note here. Notes on SEO for WordPress. And what I'm talking about will vary to some degree if you don't have a WordPress, but the concepts should still work. Plugins mini apps that add more features to your site. For example, I teach uh, an e-commerce class um, which is building a website to sell products and I use WordPress. I teach WordPress in that class and WordPress does not have the ability to sell products built in. You have to add that feature via a plugin. So there are plugins for just about every kind of thing you want to do on your website. Let's say you want to have live chat on your website. Someone visits your website, you get a notification. Someone's on your website, and you can turn on your system to chat with them live. You've probably seen that on websites out there. You're visiting some website, something pops up. Would you like to chat with someone for tech support? And you can do that with a plugin on WordPress. You can sell products with a plugin on WordPress. And there's several plugins about SEO for WordPress. Uh, so in this testing site here, um, the one that I'm recommending in WordPress, we can always add a new plugin. 
and I might see featured, popular, and favorite plugins. And it's probably under popular. Or if you can't find it, there's a plugin called Yoast SEO. This is one of the big ones for SEO features to add extra SEO features on your website. If you've got a WordPress website, if it's a different kind of website, <clears throat> you, you need to research on your particular uh, site what you need to use. But the two big ones are Yoast SEO and and or um, all in one SEO pack. These are the two big ones about SEO. I'll, I'll talk about Yoast in a moment. And I personally haven't used the all in one SEO pack a lot, but some of my colleagues have. They say it's good, it does what it needs to do. What you want to do, if, if you don't have either one of these, you need to decide on one of them. Because the thing about plugins is they could conflict with each other. If you've got two plugins, especially trying to do the same thing, they could conflict. Because this one is trying to help you write your metadata, and so is this one. So they're going to conflict and maybe overwrite each other and conflict. So you, with, with WordPress, it's recommended use one plugin for one task. Don't have two separate shopping cart plugins. Don't have two or three separate Twitter plugins. Have one plugin that does one thing, or else you might have conflicts. Uh, so here then with the SEO all-in-one pack or Yoast, it's either or. And I've for years used the SEO, Yoast SEO. I've used that one. I, I know how it works overall. I've used it. I like it. My colleagues, some of them have used the all-in-one pack. They love that one. There's no wrong answer as long as it does what you need it to do, which is, for example, adding your, your, uh, your long-tail keywords and such to your, to your site. But that's the big one that I recommend for, for WordPress. If you are on your site, and this is all optional, but if you're on your site and you see this plugin, it is something valuable to, to add. There's going to be a button to install. This is already installed, so it says more, de more details. But if you don't have that plugin, it's one of the ones I recommend. You can install it if you'd like, or if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to. Maybe just follow along for a bit to get these concepts. But the Yoast SEO, if you do use this plugin, what it does is it gives a um, it gives a new menu item brand new SEO menu. WordPress didn't have that feature. WordPress has some built-in um, SEO features that are good, but then this program that is more focused is a little better. So quick overview of, of this plugin. Um, remember a while ago uh, on the second day of class when we set up the the webmaster tools one of the questions that it asked when you were setting it up was submit a sitemap. And at that point I said, uh, unless you know you have a sitemap, don't, don't fill anything in there. Uh, so this plugin, right there, XML sitemaps, it has the ability to create a sitemap of your site. So you would use a plugin on your site to create a sitemap. And this is basically to turn it on and off. All of these other options, these defaults are fine. And now what this gives me on my particular site, um, 
and give me a site map. So again, this is a technical document written in a, in a language called XML, so I wouldn't attempt to create a sitemap myself manually. It's rather complicated. But here, this is the sitemap. It looks nice. It has a list of all my posts and pages and everything. These are all of the articles written on that blog. Again, behind the scenes, it's this code. Rather complex. In this case, it's 470 lines of code. And I wouldn't want to write that myself. Therefore, the Yoast SEO plugin, one of the things it does is it creates XML sitemaps. The point of that is then, okay, this created an XML sitemap for me. What I would do is I would go back to my Google Webmaster Tools, Bing Webmaster Tools, and I would go in and copy and paste the link to this sitemap and give it to Bing, give it to Google, and now they will be able to fully analyze my site much better. And the purpose of that is then the search engines will know all about my site much better so that when someone searches what is Wheat La Coche? There is something on my site that the search engine found that then it'll show it to the person that searched. Uh, you need the plugin and then it's under the setting right there XML sitemap. You can create the XML file on the site, right? And that's just it. You can you can manage your site through like the footer or something like that. But you also want to give it to Google and Bing. Right. That was a question. Uh, so it's in your console. It's just it's a setting for it, and that's how it knows how to find everything on your website. Otherwise, you could have things that are missing. It's more complicated. Did that answer the question? No. How do you get to that point of what link? What am I pasting into Google? What the hell? This little box here, yeah, that little box is the actual link, and that's what the search engines are asking for. So when I go back to Google Webmaster Tools or Bing Webmaster, Google Analytics and such, <clears throat> there's a box in there, submit a sitemap. So this line of code for my particular site that this particular plugin created for me, I take that, copy and paste into Google, into Bing, and that's the segment. That's yeah, I have to go back to the search engines and tell them, here's my sitemap. The good thing is that it says you do not need to generate uh, it every time. Every People often ask, okay, I it created it, but do I have to update it manually or every time I add a new article or a new page and such? Because this plugin is designed to handle this, the, it, it recreates the sitemap every time that's necessary and then submits itself automatically to the search engines. It tells the search engines there's something new. So then that's how you can stay current on the search engines because your sitemap is telling the search engines there's something new. Yoast SEO. They named it here a little bit different here, but it's just Yoast SEO. And that's on the classical script. Yoast SEO. The, the all in one SEO pack has their version of it. So again, that's why you want to do either or. You either want Yoast SEO or you want all in one. Now, if you're on, let's say, Squarespace instead of WordPress, they have this feature there as well. You just have to look at the documentation. How do I turn my sitemap? Your particular thing has it. During lab and such and such, we can check on yours if you don't have a WordPress site. But because WordPress has the largest market share, that's why I kind of focus on it most of the time. <clears throat> you can also get your, your sitemap. Here's another particular one, and or Jetpack. Jetpack is another great plugin. This one uh, is, is like a, a Swiss Army knife, and then it can do many things. 
one of the things it can do is create a sitemap. They just added that feature recently. It's getting to be that Jetpack on its own can do so many things, you, you might not need some of these other ones. So um, if you don't want the, the Yoast one, you can, you can use Jetpack. If you've already got Jetpack, maybe stick with it. You can turn either one of them on or off. But the point is you need some sort of way to create a sitemap to submit to the search engines for maximum SEO impact. I, uh, you mean Jetpack and Yoast? I, I, I still would, but I would not activate the, the sitemap feature of Jetpack. I would use the sitemap feature of Yoast because Jetpack has other things that I do want from it. So these, those, that won't cancel out, like, like Yoast and all in one cancel each other out with Jetpack. Yeah, because Jetpack also has a bunch of other features that these other two don't have. So you can turn those on and off. I don't want the sitemap on, Yo on, on Jetpack, but I do want the enhanced Twitter distribution, for example. So, uh, so I do use both of those, Yoast and Jetpack. Uh, in that case, they don't conflict. Here I'm just making a note. Set up a sitemap any way that you can with Yoast, All-in-One, or Jetpack, and then submit it to the search engine. That was that lecture we had that other time. Remember, the videos are up online, but during lab time we can check individually if you'd like. But it was when we log back into the Webmaster Tools, and there's going to be a button there waiting for you. Submit a sitemap. So this plugin lets you do that, plus some other things. Uh, there's these other settings. Um, most of the default settings here are fine. What you really want to do with this Yoast plugin is it gives you a new feature on all of your posts and pages and products and, and so forth. For example, if I go to posts, because I've activated Yoast, I get now a new column here on my articles, title, blah, blah, blah. I get this SEO column. That dot right there is that for at a glance, I can quickly check are these, are these pages optimized for SEO? Yoast or the all in one SEO pack will give you a way to SEO optimize your site page by page and that's something you really should do because we can set general settings for the whole site which are found under the general settings of the SEO plugin and that's valuable but what's more important is for you to optimize every page of your site because every page has this content that is valuable for the search engines to find. Each page is probably unique compared to every other page. Therefore, it needs the effort of SEO optimization per page. And what I'm getting at is that here, I'm looking at these blog posts, and I see some of these that have a gray dot, some of these have a yellow dot, there's a red dot, there's a green dot. This is the way that Yoast ranks your pages. Green means you've optimized this page really well to be found in theory by the search engines. Red means that that page has not been optimized well at all. In the middle we've got uh, that uh, two shades of yellow and orange. I believe they go in that order. I forget which is which. Uh, it's either the yellow then the orange or vice versa. But those are two in the middle. We've got bad SEO, good SEO in the middle. You want to avoid the bad ones, of course, as much as possible. And if you're in the middle, that's okay. And if you can get to the green, that's even better. We'll see how to do that in a moment. The gray one is you haven't started to optimize that page yet. And as I'll show in just a moment, the way that this 
is set up is that we can use Yoast to define a focus keyword. Either the classic old school keywords or the long tail keyword that we've been talking about in focusing. For example, this particular article has the keyword lost universe. So I'm trying to get when people search for lost universe on Bing or Google, I'm trying to get this site to perhaps show up when they use that keyword. And Yoast is telling me, well, you're, you're halfway there. You're not terrible, but you're not great. You're halfway there. On the, on the article down here on the blog post, Comic-Con Bingo, that's the focus keyword. When someone types Comic-Con Bingo on Bing or Google, there's a high possibility that this one can be found. Again, none of this SEO stuff you can say, any legitimate company can say, this is guaranteed, this will work, do this, you're going to get results in one week, one month, whatever. No good SEO company should be giving you guarantees that this stuff will work within some sort of time period. There might be too much competition. You might have to try different tactics. Just because I've got all my pages green doesn't mean I'm going to always show up as Google number one, or Bing number one. It's more that this is the possibility that you've done all that you could in this aspect of SEO, to achieve there on your website. But isn't that one side of the coin SEO? What's the other side of the coin? SEM. SEO, SEM. And SEM is the marketing. Remember Twitter and Facebook and Blab and your blog and Periscope, whatever? So even if you have green on all of this, this is just that one side of the coin, the SEO side. What are you doing on your website? Did you also share it on Twitter? Did you also share it on Facebook? Did you also do this, do this, do that? No? Well, that's why you're not still on number one, even though you're all green. The way this actually works is uh, you would have to edit a particular article. Let's say, uh, I'm just going to choose one here. Um, you edit an article, you edit a blog post or a page, and then um, you get uh, your content, and then at the bottom you will see a brand new little box here. This is not there until you've added the Yoast plugin. You have this new screen here, WordPress SEO by Yoast. This screen here would give you a preview. What does it look like on the search engine? So here you can see. That's what people are going to see when they possibly find me online. They're going to see the uh, the title and the description and such. And I can edit. Uh, I can edit all of this for maximum impact. Yes. Are, are you working with the paid version? No, this is still the free version. The free version works pretty well. The paid version has more features, but the free works just so fine. Mine, it just has. I just have. I, I don't have the page analysis, tab, events, and social. This site that I'm loading up here might be an older version of the plugin. You might have the newer one. They've tried to kind of consolidate things yeah. a bit. Okay. So if it doesn't look exactly the same, I'll try to pull up a site with a, with a more modern version of the plugin in a moment. But if it doesn't look exactly the same, it, the, the general concept should still apply. Yes. No, what I'm getting at is I'm I'm about to I'm about to talk about optimizing it because this is not optimized. This particular one had a gray dot. See, it says SEO not applicable. I haven't tried to optimize it yet. So the whole point of this plugin is it's showing me first what the preview will be when someone searches. And if your particular preview here has a sentence or two and then it cuts off, dot, 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 that could be something you need to address uh, for positive SEO right here, meta description. If you've got the newer version of the plugin, I believe they've changed it so that you actually have to click there, edit snippet. I think that's what that says. Uh, and so if I've got a lot of text there that gets cut off. I should write something that fits within the space, and Yoast will tell you, you've written too much. It's going to get cut off. It's better to stay within the boundaries of this limit so that you can see 
people can see the text they need to see. So just for example, if I had a really long description, if I didn't write a description, by default WordPress takes the first few sentences of my post and slaps it up there. And it might be not the best text I want to show, and it may be cut off like that. So you know, it's the same. If you write a description that fits within these limits, it's much better for SEO. Can that include the link? No, this is going to... It can have the text of the link, but it won't be an active link. The search engines don't make that active. Because this is the result of what shows up on Bing or Google, and they've got it set up so that when you click here, it's going to take you to that page, not whatever link you might have here. You will see the link, but it's not active. So on this uh, little box of the focus keyword, that's just their term for, for that keyword, long tail keyword. Um, this is also part of how this analysis is, is done. How do you get the green dot? So let's say I put in a focus keyword of costume. As I'm typing, it might be suggesting. This is live. These are keywords that are coming from Google that people might be searching for. So I had an idea to type costume. Maybe someone on Google typed costume. But Google here is saying, well, people are searching for costumes, costume store, costume jewelry. Maybe one of these suggestions will work well on this article. However, just because I get a suggestion doesn't mean I need to take it. Maybe none of these quite fit with my particular post. But perhaps Costume Gallery does, because that particular article is my top 10 costumes at Comic-Con. So let's say I'm using the focus keyword, Costume Gallery. That's what I want this site, this page on my site, to be found by when someone searches on Bing or Google. Depending on your version of the plugin, it may automatically then analyze your page and change the color of your dot. On my particular one, I have to update it. I've got an older version here. Yes? When I tried mine with the focus keyword, I didn't get a drop down of Google keyword. Um, Did anyone else try and not get that? Um, well, again, I, I should have double-checked that I had the latest version of the plugin. Sorry. I might have an older one that had that feature, and maybe the new one doesn't. You guys probably had the newer one. This one, I haven't updated this one since last year, so I might have an older um, version. Might be also this, it's a site of this one is bronze, and it doesn't have paragraphs or anything. Well, it, that, that's not quite what's happening here. Whatever you're typing here is what people would be typing on, on the search engines. So maybe also if it doesn't show anything, it might be that that particular word, no one's really looking for it. So the, then depending on your plugin, um, okay, mine isn't saying here, uh, costume gallery. That's the keyword you're trying to use, but you have not used it in the heading, you have not used it in the title, etc. Uh, I think nowadays it shows it to you more like this, page analysis, I think yeah, it shows yeah. it to you more like that. So look at, look at what I've done right and what I've done wrong. And in total, it then aggregates that into the one dot. And in my case, so far, this article is on the OK. It's on yellow. I would definitely get it out of the gray or the red. I would try to get it to the green as best as possible. But if I'm somewhere in the OK area, that might be good enough. Because I've, I, I need to do this. You should do this for every page of your site. 
So if you're going to stress about getting every one of your 50 pages to green, you might be there a while. But what if you start off with getting them all of them to at least OK? Then all your pages have OK SEO, and then you can go back and really fine-tune them as necessary. So I'm going to go right here in our notes. Use the plugin to optimize your site page by page. The one general setting is, is not good enough because your page is, the, the screens on your site are are unique with unique content so you want to optimize each page think about each page being like a mini website that someone could be looking for the content of that one page so therefore what do I need to do on that one page to get it found by someone searching use the plugin to optimize your site page by page and with Yoast because I'm not exactly sure how the only one pack does it but in Yoast try to get as many of your pages to at least OK. Get it out of the red, get it out of the gray. Get to the orange or the yellow, and then obviously the best would be the green. But the reason why you might not be able to get to green, it's right here, for example. The page title is more than 40 characters and less than 70. So great, that means I wrote a title here that fits within the boundaries. Maybe I need to write a very short title. Maybe I need to write a very long title so I don't get the green. But if I can write it within those parameters that it's telling me, that gets me one green out of many. So that SEO title, that's different than the page title that you've actually put on your page. It's the same. By default, so up here on my page title, top 10 cosplay comics day one. It's the same that shows up here. Also, depending on the theme, it may add extra stuff. My theme also adds the name of the site here. So this page title here, by default, it'll take what you wrote on the page. You can craft it to something else, such as the best costume gallery. Right, so you don't have, you're not going to change your slide or whatever it is. Exactly. It's not going to change the address, the URL. Okay. This is only going to change the title. And then now, on Google, it would look like that. The best costume gallery, and there's the keywords there. And then Yoast sees that. Put that back. So let's see the page analysis. You've never used this keyword before. Good. Again, it's all about unique content, even on your own site. Uh, yes, I'm a realtor, and I'm always going to be writing a, about realty, but I'm going to be writing variations about realty. Uh, top. Uh, five tax tips for buying a house, uh, top seven pitfalls uh, when hiring a realtor, and then a gallery of, of locations in La Jolla. You know, all of those could be different blog posts I'm writing. I'm writing on a variety of topics related to realty, and then I'm trying to use different keywords for every page as best as possible. I am going to run over I'm going to step over my own feet several times, of course, and it's perfectly fine that I wrote three articles about WordPress. That's perfectly fine. What I'm getting at is that if I try to use the same focus word of WordPress for all three of those articles, that might not be as effective because I've got three things that might be the same thing. They can't be differentiated. So what if I'm writing three articles on WordPress, but I'm saying my focus keyword is going to be WordPress or best WordPress plugins. 
So I'm going to write one article about the best WordPress plugins with that title. I'm going to write another one, how to install WordPress. So I'm still trying to get to those keywords of WordPress, but I'm doing the long tail key ver keyword versions, the best WordPress plugins, how to install WordPress. Those are keywords. Those are long tail keywords that people could be searching for. That's what it's telling me here. You've never used this one before. Yes, you are going to get that yellow or red sometimes. And again, that's okay that you're not, a, you're not getting green on all of them. I'm trying to get okay and higher. Oh, and then I see it here. It's red, then orange, then yellow, then green. There are 314 words contained. That is more than 300 word recommended. Now, if you, I believe I mentioned it in this class, and I also mentioned it in the blogging class itself. For those of you that haven't blogged before, on a regular basis, I recommend you write 100 words per month. Now, that's if you are a beginner. The more advanced you get in all of this, notice the plugin here, it's 300 words at least. Well, if I'm barely getting by with 100 words a month, I'm going to have a harder time 300 words a month. I'm going to burn out faster that way. The point is, this is one is often one that people really beat themselves up to get to, and you might not need to. It's not the only one that you need to get green to get a good result overall. You can have pages or articles with, you know, 20 words and you're going to get a big old red, but that's okay because I've got all these other greens. Uh, this one, I sort of feel like this one about the easiness of your readability, I don't think really this has much bearing in the real world. That's just something that you'll kind of possibly put in there to show off. Um, I don't really see a lot of documentation on this from the search engines themselves. Uh, so it says here that mine's an 81.3 on the flesh reading test, which is considered easy to read. Now, I'm not going to dumb it down to 81% if I'm writing a really complex paper on astrophysics. So this is more about who is your target audience. Question? No, I'm just going to say I do, I do know some doctors that can't write <laughs> simple blogs. Yeah. Got something like this to remind me. Mm -hmm. So this one, if I get that green, fine, but if it's yellow, red, whatever, I, it doesn't quite matter. It's for your audience. Who are you writing this text for? If you need to spell out deoxyribonucleic acid instead of DNA, mm -hmm. then that, is it right, is it wrong? It's who is your target audience? Yes? So you have 15 outbound links, so you, really, that sounds like a lot. So you've got a lot of outbound links on that one um, article? These are outbound links? Yes, these are links from this article to someone else's site. The point of this, and notice it's still green even though it seems like a lot, the point of this is to try to get backlinks. Let me come back to the concept over here of backlinks. So one way to try to get backlinks, phishing for backlinks. Now that might have negative connotations. Uh, I'm going to say outbound links. Inbound, outbound, you get the idea. What I'm saying here is if you link your website to other websites, you may get a link back. I'm not saying to them, please link to me, I'll pay you, please, whatever. I'm linking, I'm not even telling them, I'm not even alerting them, whatever. I'm linking to their site. WordPress, if you connect one WordPress site to another site via a link, the other WordPress site is made aware of it. I have a screen somewhere here in my WordPress that tells me um, all of the WordPress sites that are linking to my site. So there's other webmasters out there that know what they're doing and they check their, their links um, I think it's under comments, they check, oh, I've got a new link to my website. Uh, and at the minimum, they, they see that I link to their site and say thanks, and they move on, or, or nothing at all. Uh, best case scenario, uh, they see, who is this V Compost that's linking to me? Let me check their site. Oh, they've got some good site, they've got some good content there, they've got that great article. I'm going to think about them next time when I write an article. I'm going to link back to them. It is a really long, roundabout way, but perhaps you'll get some links that way. 
So that's that tactic. Phishing for those backlinks. You link to some other site that is relevant, of course. Don't just link to any site because you want to link. Link to them that they relate. You're phishing. You're linking to their site. They get a notification that they've got a new link. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, you get a link back. And backlinks are valuable for SEO. Is that like Twitter where you follow someone and then they're like, okay, I followed you, now would you follow me? Yeah, to some degree. Follow backs on social media. Like that. That's one that's one tactic that I talk about in the social media class to get followers on all social media. Follow someone, they may follow you back. That's not the best tactic, but it's one tactic to employ. Just like this here. We've got these links to these other varied websites and out of those 15, maybe one links back. I'm happy with that. One link back to my site from some other relevant site is good. But if I've only gotten two links on my page, I've only got 50-50 chance to make a link and not a link back, get a link back, and I might not get a link back from either of those, so nothing happens. Exactly. So exactly. Not some sort of like bibliography at the end. That doesn't work. It's right here. Blah blah blah. Still, the costumes known as Colors Play, and then there's a link to someone else's website that has that as an active link. So organic, organically writing the text in there, the links. Um, so if you don't have any links, so here it's kind of it's 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 suggesting to you here it's. It's helping you, it's telling you. If you don't have any links from your page to another, that's what it's trying to tell you. If I wasn't here to sort of explain that, you might think, well, why does it want me to link to some other site? I'll just link to Google. I'll just link to Wikipedia. You're not going to have any value out of that. Google and Wikipedia really are not going to link back to you in the way that we need it to. So you are going to link to some other blog, some other website, some someone else's website. At least one link. I believe you get green with at least one link out to someone else's website. And that's supposed to be telling you, link to someone else to try to get a link back. A very valuable to, one to do, which mine is, mine is okay. I can fix this one easily. No subheadings appear in the copy. Copy is just the technical term for the, for the text of your article. This is all of the text of my article. This is the copy. And what it's telling me is there's nothing here that is set as a heading. All of the text that I've written, WordPress tells me it's just a plain old paragraph. If you don't see that, it's because your, your toolbar is hidden. I'm going to open that toolbar there. But all of this text that I've written is plain old paragraph text. The search engines like it when you, put, when you mark some of this text as a heading as a way that it divides the document, organizes the document. Let me show you what I mean here. Like from a distance, <clears throat> from a distance, this paper, you can't read it, but you can see there are various sections here. There are things that are bold that stand out that tell you this is a chunk of information here. This is good organization. This can be translated to an HTML to a website and it might have some good SEO because it's got headings. This is a tag up here that's been made big, like heading one. This is one over here, it might be a heading two, this is a, perhaps another heading two. The document is divided into sections with headings. <clears throat> the search engines like that, that's organization. If you are not dividing up your content into chunks that could be hurting your SEO, and Yoast here is telling me you haven't used any heading tags. Now, it's not giving me a red out of that, so you see it's not terrible that I haven't done it. But I bet as soon as I add one more, such as, what if I make a section called In Conclusion? And I set that as some, some heading. You know, visually, now there's something divided here so that I can probably read it. And, and I see that, see how that stands out. My mind shifts to read that. And if I look down on the analysis, um, heading. It's up 
Now it's red because it's saying you haven't used your keyword in the heading. So see, I've got the heading, but it says, well, what about using your keyword in the heading? If it makes sense to, I would. So instead of in conclusion, my keyword is costume gallery, right? So can I possibly put a heading with that? Such as the best costume gallery 2016. What if I divide up this article into different years? And therefore I've got a heading, and I've got the focus keyword in the heading, <clears throat> and then now I should get that green because keyword subheading in copy. While not a major ranking factor, this is beneficial. It's after all of that. Point. But that's how I would try to get as many of these as green as possible. I would try to do what it's telling me uh, to do here. It's telling me that my page title might be too short, but you know, it's still not read. Um, I don't have the keyword in my address. When I wrote my article and created this address, the address is this right here. And I don't have that keyword anywhere in my address. If only there was a way to somehow change that. If you edit it, does it change it in the database? Or? Exactly. So if you click edit, that'll change your address, and that's where you can put that focus keyword. Top 10 best costume gallery. The trick here is that you do have to write this lowercase, no spaces, no special characters. So if it was like an article that was, I can't get my kids to eat Brussels sprouts. Um, I would write the, the address here, I can't, without the special character, get my kids to eat veggies. That's a focus keyword. Parents are searching for that. How do I get my kids to eat veggies? So you have to think about how is someone going to possibly search for this. That's your focus keyword, either a short phrase or a long tail keyword. And think about how we can apply that logically to the site. Now, I don't have to do this. I can just ignore this one because this is one of the many factors that are helping me rank. So maybe I don't want to do that one. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't want to break that link because if you change that link, it might break other links. Let's say worst case scenario, it's going to break my link. Well, I might not want to change it. It doesn't appear in my address, but notice it tells me, if you decide to rename your addresses, be sure to check the old URL 301 redirects to the new ones. It's just, that's a technical thing. That's why you might not want to do this unless you know what that means. I've got other things I can try to fix, such as my keyword density. I barely use that keyword one time in the actual copy of my, of my, of my article. I need to use it maybe one or two more times. But this is a percentage based on how much you've written. So if I've written um, 100 words and I've used it three times, then I might have overused it. But if I wrote 500 words and I used the keyword three times, it might be enough. I don't know what enough is. The plugin helps me. It's on the orange. It's leaning toward the not so OK. So I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but this is the concept here. Yoast is helping me, and the SEO all-in-one pack to a degree helps you as well. Yoast is helping me craft the SEO page by page, and that's something you need to do. Not, you might say, well, I don't have any blog posts. Do you have a home page? Do you have an about us? Do you have contact? All of those can also be optimized. If I go to pages, I've got an about page, at least on this one, and it's got an OK. Maybe I want to get that higher. But maybe if you've created your products page, your contact page, your team members page, and you never optimize any of those, not thinking about it, Yoast will remind you of that. And they're all going to be gray, or worse yet, red. 
So that's the whole point of this plugin to help you optimize your site page by page. So you probably get better at this. Maybe. The more you do it. Yeah. You're already going to know. As you start working on it, you're already going to know, okay, I need to think in terms of keywords and how do I add them to my site judiciously. And I've got a great idea for an article, but now I'm going to think about how to use that keyword in the title of the article. So I'm going to move on. Again, I'm not going to look at every one of these considerations here, uh, but the Yoast plugin over on it has its own uh, it has its own help also. Let's see where did they put it. Usually the um, the plugins that have uh, a premium version, because this is a totally free plugin and it works really well. And they have a version where you can get the premium one with a few more features. Oftentimes, <coughs> to get tech support and extra help and such, that's where you're paying for that premium price. And this really ranges from five dollars to fifty dollars one-time fee monthly fee it ranges these plugins a lot of different companies work on them everyone's got their own scheme uh, pricing scheme so you have to check your particular plugin so for example for more advanced help how does it all work and such I can go back to the website maybe get some premium help uh, but that's the that's the way things work on WordPress nowadays there's so many great plugins out there so many great themes widgets, all of this great stuff, people often give them away, maybe they solicit donations, or maybe they have this freemium model where you get a lot of great stuff for free, but if you pay a little for the premium services, you get more. How do you do this if you don't use WordPress HTML site? On your HTML site, <clears throat> you, you're going to be editing your code, and you're going to see in your code a section of meta meta tags. And you're going to need to write code in Dreamweaver uh, for the particular description. That is only one piece of the puzzle because notice what, y what Yoast does. It, it, uh, it counts your keyword density and all of that. It uh, reminds you you're missing uh, your keyword in your title and you have these number of links, and you have these number of words, so there is going to be some limitation in classic Dreamweaver to do most of this. Uh, that's why people are moving away from that. Well, the same thing. Any, with any sort of coding, um, again, the short answer is, you can't do it with plain old code because um, you need to count your words. You know, you can copy and paste that into Microsoft Word and have it have it count for you to decide if you're within that limit. And then, you know, to to add something as a as a heading, well, that's that's pretty easy in, in the code. That's just setting something as H2 and how to make links to out to make outbound links. You can make links with the A tag and so forth. So some things can be done by a code and something's not. Maybe during the break we can talk a little more on one, one on one. Uh, but these modern website building tools like Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, WordPress make, make this easier. Classic ways of doing it in HTML is a little more complicated, but it's still doable. Other general questions about this discussion? All right, let's take one more break. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll we'll talk about the analysis of, of a site. If you'd like your site, uh, if you'd like us to talk about your site, I'll pull it up here, and then we'll we'll talk about it. So it's three o two. Let's take a, a slightly shorter break. It's three o two. We'll be back at three ten. 
so just about eight minutes. And at 3.10, we'll do the, the site analysis.